Yo, what's up, dudes? What's up? Check out the new axe. I know a bunch of you have seen this already uh, at the live show. Um, this was sent to me by a, a guy down in Texas. Um, and I don't know if he wants me to give his name out, but, uh, you know, I, I can't thank him enough because I, I love this guitar. It, you know, it's a bit of a novelty. Uh, you can find them out there. They're around, I've seen them between like, say, 250 and 300 bucks, somewhere around there. If you can find one, you know, they're, they're, they're getting exceedingly rare. Um, but they're cool. It's a it's a short scale, obviously. It's a 19 and a half inch scale. It's made by a company called Lotus, which was a Japanese company. I believe is no longer in business. But if you know that they are, let me know. But everything I could see seems like that they they went under, uh, probably in the 90s, actually, um, or the early 2000s. But these were made in the late 80s and the early 90s, uh, maybe up until the mid 90s. Not really sure. It's hard to find information about them, and you find a lot of little different things here and there. It is a bolt on neck, so I believe, from what I could see online, that this was most likely made in Korea. Um, Lotus did make some guitars. Lotus didn't make any guitars. Okay, Lotus was a brand name, and they, like Ibanez, right? And they job everything. Everything's made by guitar factories, but they don't own a single guitar factory themselves, right? Um, so Lotus was a brand, and they would go to Samick and, you know, uh, Fuji Gen, and, you know, whoever could, you know, fulfill the orders, of, you know, their design specs and, and, and produce the guitar for them. So it, from what I can see online, um, if it was a set neck full size guitar, and they weren't just a novelty small size guitar company, it seems like they made a whole range of guitars and they just made a couple of small ones. But these seem to be the ones they're most remembered for, right? Because they're they leave an impression. Um, it's a heavy guitar. I'll throw it up on the scale, but if I had a guess, I'd say it's it weigh. It feels like it weighs around the same as my Strats. I'm going to say it's about a seven seven pound guitar. Um, you know these. Uh, if it was a if it was made by uh, the Japanese factory, uh, it would have a set neck. And if it's made by the Indonesian or um, Korean factories, it would have a bolt-on neck. That seems to be what I could find out there. This neck, right, with the binding on the side and the dot inlay, this just reminds me of a Korean-made instrument, right? There were a lot of instruments coming out of Korea particularly made by Samick, that would have this exact same look. So I'm leaning towards this was made by Samick in Korea. The quality seems um, pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's a heavy guitar. Um, it, it's very, whenever I hand it to someone, they can't believe how, how, you know, how much it weighs. Um, these were made in all kinds of different you know, woods based on this little green patch right here. I almost want to say this is poplar, right? Um, that's very, that that darkness, that li little green, gray sort of stripe reminds me of poplar. May not be, but that was the first thing I thought of when I, when I saw it, that little bit of a, of a tinge like that. Um, and the grain pattern just looks like poplar. Uh, they also used maple. They used alder. It seems like they were all over the place. Um, I'm going to say it's poplar, just based on the weight and, um, and the grain pattern. Could be alder. I mean, who knows? But not with that coloration. It's that coloration that's pointing me towards poplar, but who knows? Um, the, the, the pickups are stock. They look like DiMarzio Super Distortions, but they're not. Uh, the stock um, pickups, uh, you know, have hex, you know, dual uh, uh, white bobbins and, and hex, um, uh, you know, screws in them. So they, they certainly look like the Marcio Super Distortions, but they're not. In fact, if you look at all the, the old photos, it's pretty consistently this pickup set in this guitar um, if you go out on the Internet and, and look around. Um, it, it, it's in... 
I would say 99% awesome shape. I was stunned at, at how clean it was. Um, the only the only problem is yeah, that little buzz. Fine, fine, fine. Little fine once you hit the first fret. So this nut is cut just a touch too low on the high E. I could put some super glue and baking soda in there and fill it in and, uh, you know, uh, cut a new nut if I wanted to, you know, a new nut slot. I think more likely I'll just um, tear this nut out and put a, um, like a bone or a tusk nut into it. Um, and the tuners are, you know, if you're born 1980 or prior, you know those tuners. <laughs> You know, they're not the greatest. Very, very commonly used tuner. Um, they, they're pretty solid. I'd say the thing I don't like about it is the turning ratio. It's a pretty low ratio. You want a high ratio, right? It's a low ratio. And that low ratio turn, especially on a short scale guitar, uh, it's a little tricky, right? You got to be really precise to get that in tune. So I think putting like a tusk knot and a, you know, a nice new set of, um, you know, either, uh, Cluson, Dragoto, or Grover, really. It probably used the Grover version of the Cluson style. I like Grover tuners. I think they're some of the better tuners out there. Um, it, I think it would make a world of difference in the tuning stability. Not that this is all that bad. You gotta remember, on a short scale guitar, there it is, normal pressure. There it is. Put my finger. Because the string is so short, it doesn't take a lot of change in tension to make a change in pitch, right? Unlike your much longer scale guitar. So, Trust me, even on a long scale guitar, you can still push it out of tune with your fingers. But this is particularly susceptible to it. In tune. Out of tune. In tune. Out of tune. So it really um, requires sort of a light touch. Um, but you get used to it. And uh, there's a certain brightness, you know. <laughs> That I just really like about this. And uh, I don't know if you've ever used a capo, but, or a capo. People say it should be pronounced capo, but wouldn't it be two P's if it was capo? The use of one P would mean it's pronounced capo. Anyway, I digress. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of using capos. Um, so here I am at capo with third fret. Right, because I'm tuning G. Like, gotta be careful. The sound police will come after me. They've been vicious lately. So I gotta be careful with that. <laughs> but here it is, the Lotus Mini. Um, if you find one, I can say they're a pretty damn good guitar. Uh, I've seen a few out there for sale, and uh, I watched a couple of videos, and... Uh, there's at least one guy out there that says, you know, I probably should have never sold that guitar. Uh, and, and I hear, you know, because when you have it, you're like, oh, you know, I don't use it that much. But it, it, it is sort of a novelty, right, to some degree. But it's just cool. And I think, um, you know, it's one of those guitars, you, you know, you pull out four or five times a year. But they're good times. <laughs> The good times, and like I said, if, you know, if you want a particular sound, obviously a, a, a high pitch sound, you know, this guitar will do it. So, uh, missing the um, the the selector switch, and it's a tiny bit smaller. Uh, I might be able to find it at my local like electronic supply warehouse, but um, the ones that I had in stock, I actually have a few of these tips around. Right, you pick them up over the years; they're all too big; they fell right off. So this switch is a tiny bit uh, smaller diameter, um, you know, toggle than um, than standard. So uh, I'll have to find a tiny bit smaller than standard switch tip if I want to put it on it. 
The only downside of that is that a lot of the ones I'm finding at the electronic stores are black, and I'd like to get a white one if I could. They're like black or red. <laughs> right? Anyway, there you have it. Lotus Mini Les Paul. I have no idea what they called this. They called it, it says vintage on the on the um on the truss rod plate, but was it was it called the vintage? Was it a tribute? Maybe. That actually kind of makes sense the more I think about it. All right, dudes, as always. Thanks so much for stopping by. And rock on.